Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Hello and welcome to this webinar on why carries choose Postgres SQL. My name is Violet Sia from Enterprise DB APJ Marketing. I will be your host today. Before we get started, um, I just want to run through a few housekeeping items. Uh, this webinar is recorded and if you have any questions, please write them in the question box. Please note that all questions will be asked at the Q&A session after the presentations. Today, we are pleased to have uh, three distinguished speakers. Amajit Tiwari, Director of Technology and Innovations from Carry Solutions, who will share his company's experience on migrating from legacy system to EDB Postgres. We also have Ashish Mera from EDB and Sanjoy Dutta from Chemtroys to give brief introductions to their companies. So without further ado, let me hand the mic over to Ashish. Ashish, over to you. Thank you, Violet. Thanks a lot. So first of all, thank, thanks everyone for joining this session. Uh, we've, got, we've got quite a discussion or quite a session planned ahead for you. Uh, as Violet just said, we're going to have Amarjeet from Care Risk walk you around or walk you through the journey towards Postgres. Uh, and Sanjay, who was part of our partner ecosystem, is going to talk about Chemtrol and what they've been able to do with Care Risk on Postgres. Uh, before I do that, uh, let me just quickly introduce myself and Enterprise DB. My name is Ashish Mehra. I head sales for Enterprise DB in India. Uh, Violet, if you could move to the next slide. Till around early 2000, one of the biggest uh, hidden or hidden gems was Postgres. Very few people knew about it. Very few people knew about the power of Postgres, but that's, that's no longer the case. Uh, if you could move to the next slide. Uh, if you look at Postgres today, it's one of the most loved database and most commonly used database across different geographies. Apart from being the database of the year in 2017 and 18, it's a database that's that's used aggressively on, and across the world in enterprises and different verticals. So I'm I'm pretty sure anybody who's attending this webinar, if you look at inside, you would you would see different applications that are being uh, worked on Postgres. If you move ahead, let me just give you a quick small history about Postgres. Uh, Postgres goes all the way back to 1986. That's where uh, the design of Postgres started. Uh, initially, Postgres was not known as PostgreSQL. It was known as PostgreSQL. Postgre. Uh, subsequently, in 1996, it was changed to PostgreSQL. Uh, EDB joined the journey. Uh, Violet, if you could move to the next slide. Uh, EDB joined the Postgres journey in 2004. One of the initial and until date, our focus has been to make Postgres successful and much more powerful. Uh, what we've been doing is trying to build an ecosystem around Postgres. Uh, if, you, if you've been working on Postgres, early, early years, Postgres, if you wanted to download, if you wanted to use, you had to go to postgres.org. Uh, if you wanted some tools around it, you had to do a search on Google. That's no longer the case. EDB has now been able to build an ecosystem around Postgres and a lot of work that is being done by Enterprise DB is open source. A lot of people at Enterprise DB uh, like Robert Haas, Dave Page are champions of the Postgres community and are EDB employees who are, who are working to make Postgres much more stronger. Uh, incidentally, EDB Postgres is the only database which is part of the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant. We work with 4,000 of our customers to support them in their deployments across the globe. If you move to the next slide, quick history about Enterprise DB. As I said, we, we were founded in 2004. We're essentially a group of uh, database fanatics. Our, our objective is to make Postgres powerful, to make Postgres easier, stronger, for everybody to use and, and make Postgres much more accessible to everyone, be it a developer, be it a DBA, or uh, to the whole IT world. 
gone are the days when Postgres would be used in specific kind of applications. Now, if you look at Postgres, from the most crit mission critical applications to uh, different uh, telecom applications to banking applications, you will find Postgres everywhere. We've got 16 offices worldwide. Violet, if you can move to the next one. If anybody is looking to deploy any database, they look at they look at a couple of things. They want the speed and reliability when they're launching their application or they're launching their product. They want faster performance. They want, and at the same time, they want somebody to help them. They want a backing of an organization who could support them with enterprise level tools, 24 by seven support, and the confidence that if something goes wrong, they are there with them. They're with them through the, through the journey of their implementation. The Enterprise DB and Postgres builds that combination. We get the power of open source with Postgres and the enterprise uh, class 24 by seven support and tools which help different organizations like KRS uh, build their applications around Postgres and deploy it at different enterprises. If you can move ahead. Uh, this is the ecosystem that Enterprise DB has been able to build. So if you are a customer who's looking to deploy EDB, Postgres, or the community level Postgres, you've got those options. If you're looking to deploy it on the cloud, if you're looking to deploy it on-prem, public cloud, private cloud, you've got all the options available for yourself. If you if you need tools to manage them, if you need tools to uh, make your life easier, we've got an enterprise class tooling available. To back it up, we've got 24 by seven support, services, uh, world-class training facilities, and a lot of uh, services to help you get started, be it uh, getting start services, optimizing your current environment, or taking it to the next level. Enterprise DB is there to help you to take it to the next level. We can move on. The three ways that we, we try to work with any organization or we, we try to uh, work in the ecosystem per se is to first of all, make Postgres stronger, May share our capabilities, with the community. A lot of work, as I mentioned, that we do as Postgres is open source. Our, our objective is to make Postgres strong. Our objective is to make Postgres accessible uh, and easy for everyone to use. We share our expertise with customers to deploy, uh, to make their deployments much more easier, to make their deployments much more uh, powerful so that as their applications or as their product scale, the database can scale with them and it's not a bottleneck for them. And the third most important piece is enablement. We enable you, we educate our customers, uh, both from a DBA perspective, from a developer perspective, so that they can build uh, applications around Postgres, they can manage those applications around Postgres. And again, it, it's a seamless expertise when we're moving from a different RDBMS towards Postgres. Uh, moving on, uh, that I think that was, while if you can move on. Yeah, so that was that was a little bit about Postgres. If you have any questions about Enterprise DB, I'll be more than happy to answer them at the end of, uh, in the QA session. Uh, now I'd like to introduce Sanjoy Datta. Sanjay uh, heads the Enterprise DB practice at Chemtrol and uh, he's the vice president there. Sanjay, over to you. Thank you, Ashish. Good afternoon, all. We are happy to have you in this webinar. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is Sanjoy and I represent Chemtrolls Infotech. Chemtrolls Infotech is primarily IT services company and we are partner of Enterprise DB. I'm happy to share that our partnership with Enterprise DB and our joint relationship has helped immensely on our journey. We are, uh, Violet, next slide. We are incorporated in 2012 and we are part of Chemtrolls Group. Chemtrolls Group is a 43 years old group and we supply all niche and automation and instrumentation solution primary to the engineering industry. Where Chemtrolls Infotech, we position ourselves as a niche IT services pair and we are a boutique service provider and with the help of our portfolio, we have around 80 large customers as we speak, which are across India and overseas. Next slide. 
our portfolio consists of a few niche and uh, cost effective solutions which includes database management solution software asset management solution disaster recovery process automation solution work from home and bdi solution governance risk and control and application performance monitoring solution and data recovery and protection solution next slide all these solutions are primarily aimed to ensure compliance or enhanced compliance cost optimization and operations optimization next slide enterprise db's database management solution and services is one of our key offerings to our customer and we offer uh, as ashi spoke uh, postgres based multimodal enterprise class database management and solution and service the services as we are a niche it services player the solution we provide are pilot can go to the next slide are these services uh, we take pride in in saying that we generally get involved with a customer from a pre-sales to operation so that we are all through with the customer we don't leave the customer in between the services we provide around database management solutions are assistant during sizing database or hardware sizing installation services migration assessment services to automated tools these tools are part of the edb solutions data migration services many a customer sometimes need that we need a data migration people who will help us to data migration we do provide that services we also provide as a part of operations dba services where there are many models which are on site somebody wants to have a dba or their premises we can do that we can even do that remotely or we can do a blended model based on customer need all these services are customizable and customized services as per customer's need we provide. And lastly, we do provide managed services, which is same as database as a service, where you have to, while well, the customer can avail databases without going any further details. The value proposition with our solution and services are uh, freedom from the proprietary OEM as, uh, as part of a solution, we provide open source based database management solution. There is no CapEx is a subscription based pricing and obviously there are substantial cost savings in the current situation where uh, uncertainties are probably the new normal and challenges business challenges have posed a serious threat on the business coming out of the legacy and adopting our technologically advanced business solution to save cost has been the call of the day edb is globally accepted and accredited solutions coupled with Kentrol's proven service capability as increasingly gaining relevance and showing direction to conquer the current business challenges. I'm sure uh, you will probably be able to connect our solution services and of course the a case study uh, of care risk. So with this, I will invite uh, Amarjit Tiwari, Director Innovation Technology of Care Risk to share his case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sanjay. And uh, good evening, guys. I hope you are in the same time zone as of me. So it is good evening for you. Otherwise, if you are in different time zone, then respective type of a greeting, please accept from me. Uh, those who are from India, nowadays, since it's being a monsoon season, you might realize that how difficult it used to be in earlier time when we were not in a lockdown to reach to our office. Like in Mumbai or Delhi, it was pathetic. So now you now since we all are working from home, so that hassle of commute has take, been taken care of. So that's a good side, good side of you know being in the lockdown. The other side, the bad side of lockdown, is like I've been feeling like I've been house arrested for no crime for the last four months. So that's how it is. So thank you very much. Uh, and, I'm Amarjit Tiwari, as Sanjoy and uh, Violet, they introduced me. Uh, my, I'm, a I'm designated as a director of technology and product innovation. So basically in my company, it is my job 
to bring in the new technology innovation to the existing product which we offer and the functional advancement which we can do so having said that since the day i joined care risk solution we have been uh, transforming our offerings we have been transforming our product from one technology to the other let me share one example with you so recently my friend's daughter she completed her bsc i was having a conversation the casual conversation with my friend and he requested me what should she does i mean if she is she is willing to complete her pg but which institute would be better whether it should be symbiosis from a pune or some institute from the bangalore because she is from the biotechnology background so that was a dilemma for me also how do i pick which one is better so that's the dilemma exactly similar dilemma we had when we were started working with care risk solution and in one of the customer where the legacy database was there and we had multiple challenges so at that time we were clueless we wanted to migrate our solution but which database would be an appropriate database so that similar kind of a dilemma was there so now i'm going to share i'm i'm here today i'm going to take you to the experience of mine which we have learned while working with care risk solution when we ran into a problem of one of the product which is mtp yeah so violet could you just help me with the next slide okay so i'll just give you a brief about the care risk solution care risk solution is a multi indian multinational company we are 100% wholly owned subsidiary of uh, india's second largest rating agency which is a care rating agency care ratings limited and we have a presence in 10 different geographical location meaning we are the leader in sri lankan banking industry if you see any sri lankan bank they are using our enterprise risk management platform for their risk credit risk management that strong the company is uh, we are iso 9001 and 2000 certified and all those things are there so company is, has a proven track record yeah violet please move to the next one right so as you can see on your screen uh, this 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 denotes what kind of a product care risk solution has so we are mainly focused we are very much focused company unlike the big companies who are making you know from needle to airplane we are not like them we are very specialized operating in niche area which is a credit risk and the cfo cro line of business and cfo line of business cro line of business is chief risk officer and chief finance officer so whichever product in whichever bank they are they are there those products are being manufactured or are being provided by the care risk solution so under cro line of business we have calypto credit which is internal rating engine loan origination system collateral and limit management loan collection and recovery and early warning signal which is our asset portfolio monitoring then we have operation risk market risk for the CRO line of business. In CFO line of business, we have assets and liability management, fund transfer pricing, and FRA, financial report automation. So financial report automation, meaning the entire balance sheet of the bank or entire balance sheet of the organization can be generated by the automated system, which, we, which is provided by us. So as you can see in CFO line of business, one product is FTP, that is fund transfer pricing now banks are using this product to calculate the profitability now what is that profitability let's say you have an account with the bank i'm just giving you this short summary of the ftp product let's say if you have an account with the bank so you do a regular transaction so so bank what they do they try to find out how much profit bank has earned from having you as a customer so bank has a different formula to compute that so they do a profitability computation at the product level product level meaning savings account credit, your current account your credit card account and then different flavors in that like kids account super saving account or salary account that's a product wise 
then they also compute profitability from the branch wise let's say in mumbai they have hundreds of branch which branch is maximum profit generating branch and they generate it at the bank level so that's how they compute so in order to calculate profitability the bank has to see the product the ftp product has to see each and every transaction which is originating let's say you go to the branch and you deposit some cash so when you deposit a cash how much profit the bank is generating out of that if you withdraw cash how much profit bank is generating out of that so that kind of a computation is done by ftp so having said that since entire transaction has to go through imagine the kind of volume our ftp application is handling and that is where we had a problem and we decided to switch to postgres so i am going to share that success story today how we ran across multiple problem and how kentrol and edb came to rescue of care risk solution uh, violet could you help me with the next slide please right so as you can see on your screen it is just an uh, example from the production environment of one of the bank in the sri lanka it's our largest private uh, public sector bank like we have the state bank of india in india similarly they, we call it as a state bank of sri lanka but they are they are different name so they are pub, they are public sector bank over there so as you can see on your screen in the month of uh, january till november i have a data and the data says the records are in 0.3 billion 0.3 billion is 300 crores of record was getting generated each month and these many transactions were processed by our ftp application in the next uh, in in the same you can see on the right hand side there's a chart which indicates how much it has processed so what happened you know the legacy database which was there in the bank live environment i will not be refrained from taking a name also it was an oracle hexa data so and that platform on the exa data platform this entire processing was getting taken care of so system was taking anywhere near about 176 hours to complete entire processing and generate the profitability report then bank started complaining us said bank came after us and said it the system is taking 177 hours so they were not able to meet the compliance guideline the regulatory guideline because the regulatory were after them to submit those reports and they were not able to furnish the report in this stipulated time frame so they reached out to our management escalation was there and somehow i got involved so they we my entire team got involved we did this due diligence we collected the data in the data we realized there are 100 there are 300 crores of record was getting processed and there was a multiple bottleneck happening at the at the database level so usually we found temp table space you know that if you are familiar with the dba activity you will come to know there is something called as a temp table so usually you know we had given two two terabytes i am i'm um with this number two terabyte can you imagine the size we have given to our temp table it was two terabyte even after allocating 2 terabyte the system was not able to complete the process and sometimes process was getting abruptly closed we had a tough time we investigated we found out something or the other failing on the exa data platform we escalated to the customer also we were having a discussion with the bank it officials so bank it official assured us that they have a gold partnership with the database vendor with the legacy database vendor they said they have the gold partnership so what we can do we can leverage that so we said okay fine so let's let's start the ticket so we raise the ticket which we call it as an sr so we raise the ticket you won't believe and this is so shameful that oem they assigned an engineer since they had a gold partnership they assigned an engineer engineer started asking a question is this happened is that happened please submit awr report please submit monitored report run this query submit that report they started investigating one month is over what is the result result was zero and then we escalated this to higher management of the service provider 
then suddenly they changed the engineer and new engineer was assigned and new engineer started from abc they started asking submit the awr report we run the process let me monitor is and this kind of you know the multiple back and forth executed for three next three months in next three months no profitability report was generated no submission happened to the regulators regulators came heavily on the bank bank had no choice but then they reached out to us we said it's your cold partnership which we thought to utilize but now since not working out so let us do something else so what we did we tweaked our application and we brought it down from 177 hours to 68 hours and bank was able to generate the report and submit it so what we did we reduced the number of gl headers because gl header multiplied by branch number multiplied by accounts was getting processed so if you reduce one of the figure there was a drastical reduce in the number of transaction which was processed by the application and that's how by tweaking in the application we managed it though it was not a proper tweaking so that that moment of time we realized this is not workable solution if this is happening with sri lankan bank imagine if this volume is scattered in india what will happen so that is where we realized we need to do some we need to find out alternative so in the process of finding alternative since i am from the open source background i was always inclined toward postgres as well we reached out to kentrol and that's where kentrol helped us so could you just move to the next slide right so as you can see i also am we are we are also carrying a success story from one of the indian bank it's a financial institute so now since we moved out from oracle to postgres we started we thought we will migrate all our product and we will leverage the beauty of postgres database edb postgres database and that's where we started working with kentrol that's where mr sanjoy helped us a lot they we requested them one person who will help us one expert from their organization who will help us on the migration and that person was stationed at my office day to day of and he was helping us with the migration and post migrate start post migration we started reaching out to the indian banks and one of the indian financial institute who has a very big balance sheet can you imagine their balance sheet it's 5 lakh crore their balance sheet size is 5 lakh crore of indian rupees so that financial institution along with us uh they chose us for their credit risk as a enterprise risk partner and our product which is credit risk market risk and ews early warning signal has been chosen by them and we are going to we are under the implementation at them, at their location and this entire engagement was successful and was possible rather this entire engagement was possible with the help of edb postgres so what we did uh, during our case study we realized what was the challenges which we which we face in legacy database one the transaction processing second the time uh, the time they was taken there for the respond of the queries which were raised third whatever features is available in the legacy database is those available in the postgres so on these three points we decided we will go along with edb postgres and what we did we successfully migrated our products we tested in house by creating a similar kind of a load volume and we found there was around 30% of improvement in the transaction processing if i have a legacy database versus edb postgres i tell you one more reason why i was more inclined to edb you might have seen ubuntu database ubuntu operating system and you might have seen microsoft operating system have you ever thought why maximum virus why maximum malware why maximum trojans which are originated is only targeting the microsoft operating system why not that much frequent frequent attack is happening on ubuntu or linux i mean unix or linux 
because those are so stable those linux is open source and it is the contribution is coming from across the world so that's that's the beauty of having an open source now since it is an open source database your postgresql is open source database there is no accountability and that is why we chose edb because edb comes with the beauty of open source database and they provide the licensing licensing capability that somebody is there if you run across in any kind of a problem you have someone to look upon they will help you 24 by 7 depending on the support other arrangement so that was the precise reason why we chose edb not any other database and since support was better we got the resource who started working at our our uh, from our office we migrated and we were able to increase our revenue as well so benefits if you look at the benefits we are getting best in class model of support that's the one thing we have a good reading materials available good training material is available with edb postgres and third it was very pocket friendly so and because of these all arrangements their risk solution also increased their revenue sense. So we were able to close three different new customers. We were able to add three new logo in our customer list with the help of EDP Postgres. And all credit goes to EDP Postgres. So that's how we were able to do this success story. So as of now, as you can see, solution given on your screen under the pain point below, if you go, there is a something called solution given. So we gave this this bank, financial institute, Calypto credit risk, Calypto market risk, and Calypto Consta check. Consta check is our AWS system. So these three application we migrated and we have given it to the bank. So that's how you know we were able to have it. Yeah, Violet, could you just move to the next slide, please? Okay. So so that's how you know that's how we were able to manage this success story this was not just the one could you just please go back to the previous slide i'll add one more detail i think i think i missed to add one more detail so uh, so we were talking about the big financial institute not just that we also added a customer called as punjab and Sindh bank now since the care risk solution is all bank and financial institute based company so that's where we have all the banking customers so we were able to close these two customers and we are in the advanced stage of closing a new customer as well so we will be you know we will be soon releasing a new new partnership with some new bank so that's how it is yeah any question you have uh, we will be you know uh, taking those questions under the question and answer series and now i would hand it over to my colleague violet Violet, could you just take it over from here? Thank you very much, um, Amajit, uh, for this very interesting sharing of your company's experience with EDB Postgres and also with Chemtrol. So uh, right now, we have a poll question that we want to um, share with um, the audience, please uh, let, let us know uh, what DBMS systems you are currently using. Okay, I'll launch the poll now. Just stick on your screen. Okay, I think, um, have everybody completed the poll? Okay, let me stop the poll. And so um, <clears throat> we have close to 80% of the attendees saying that they are using Oracle, 32% uh, my SQL and 32% Postgres SQL with 11% uh, uh, of others. So thank you very much uh, for sharing with us. Uh, it's good to know that uh, the majority of you are using uh, Oracle um, DBMS. 
So uh, we are now, um, we have completed the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please write it in the uh, uh, question box. Okay, um, I have one question. Um, this is, uh, I think, for Ashish Mira. It says, as we are in lockdown now, uh, is there any online certification in Postgres SQL? Uh, so th thanks, Alec. Thanks for the question. Uh, so yes, EDB has uh, both training and certification offerings, which are online. Uh, certification is always online, but training options are also available online. So if you would want to register and do a training, uh, or if you want to go for a certification, you can go to enterprisedb.com, and on our training page, you'll have uh, there's a page which talks about certification. You can click on that, and you can. Go ahead and enroll yourself for a certification. Thank you, Ashish. Um, I have another question. It says, how easy or difficult to migrate from Oracle? I guess uh, Amajit can answer this or anyone actually yeah. of the panel. Yeah, this, yeah this, this, I think I think I'll take this answer. I'll take this sure. question. I tell you what the reason also. Because since I've been recently we I've been experienced my entire division, my entire team helped this helped me from migrating from Oracle to EDB. So I am the right person to answer this question. So so during the journey, I'll share the experience also. So during the journey, as people know, if I believe this is from some technical person, so I'll speak in the technical language. And if somebody is not able to understand, you can stop me. So so what happens, you know, when whenever we create some application. So application is usually have a tight coupling tight coupling with the database. When I say tight coupling, it's like when you write a query. So in Oracle also, you have a way of writing. If you have an inner join, you usually end up using a plus sign. So similarly, if there is a tight coupling you have in your application, then you have a problem. Otherwise, there is a no problem. That's the one thing. Second thing, we have used already provided automated tools. Automated tools meaning, EDB has a tool which which when you give it when you assign your Oracle database they read the entire object schema and they transform it when they transform it you have the complete list ready which can support your EDB Postgre database which is completely compatible with the EDB Postgres syntax wise they will be completely uh, compatible there could be some chance when you run then here and there there will be certain issues otherwise 80% of the time it is completely works as it is whenever the, you use the transformers. So those transformers will help you to transform your objects from your Oracle schema to the EDP schema. So in short, the tools are available. You need not have to worry. Those tools will do a job on your behalf. Yeah, Violet. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Majid. Okay, we have a question here. I think the person is asking about um, alternative uh, solutions. So uh, he asked, do you have alternative for migrating from Microsoft uh, SQL Server? I guess it's also probably, uh, if I'm interpreting it correctly, is like, uh, did you consider other DBMS? Um, while migrating from legacy uh, DB, maybe some yes, joy. Yes. Or, yeah. Okay. Or, or so, yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's a nice question. Actually, we did. We did. I tell you the reason also. Before joining Care Risk Solution, I was a part of an organization called as MPS Payment Solution, and I was head of a technology over there. So during my association with MPS Payment. We had a remittance platform. So remittance meaning the money which was getting remitted back in India from the UK. So we had a tie up with Axis Bank and Axis Bank UK branch, wherein we created a mobile app. And using that mobile app, people used to send money from UK to India. So that payment platform, we use Postgres SQL. So my experience with Postgres SQL was Definitely a good associate good impression was there for the Postgre during my association with MPS payment system. So 
So since I was coming and I knew that Postgres SQL is quite good, that was a one reason I was little inclined towards EDB Postgres. That's a one reasoning. Second reasoning, we had already burned our fingers on Oracle legacy database. So my SQL, trying my SQL without it will be again a proprietary database. So we never from Oracle is what proprietary database. My uh, MS SQL, I mean your Microsoft SQL is again a proprietary database. So that is where we decided we will not go ahead with any proprietary database. We will only try with open source database. That was the other reason why we migrated to Postgres. Now, having said that, the question will come then why only Postgres? Why not MySQL? Because Postgres we had seen in my previous association the performance wise the security wise the other aspect of it those were very fantastic and second reason my sql has been taken over by the oracle and i was not very comfortable with my sql because now it has been backed by a big giant so they might be trying to kill it and so the beauty has been already been destroyed that is another reason why we decided we will switch over to EDB Postgres. And now Postgres SQL was there, but having EDB on top of it, it's, it's like the wonderful combination. Okay, then a Sone Pe Suhaga, so something similar. Yeah, Violet. Okay, thank you very I mean, much, I mean, much. I will, I will also, I will also invite Ashish or Jaya to, you know, explain, just, just explain what I said, but this was my experience, which I just shared. Sure, sure. Yeah. So over to you, uh, Ashish or Sanjoy, or yeah, to add some more comments. Right. Uh, so we've got a lot of customers who who have uh, looked at migrating from from post uh, from other RDBMS, not only Oracle, to EDB. And one of the again, uh, one of the biggest uh, factor for them when they move is. Uh, the the fact that postgres is backed by a community and it's one of the biggest uh got the most independent community and with edb providing all the tools and uh comp ecosystem around it it makes it, it makes it a lot more easier for them to take that decision uh we've got we've got uh from an enterprise EDB perspective we've got the tools that help you do the migration uh so it's it's not it's not a total manual effort that you have to put in when you're looking to migrate from your current rdbms to postgres uh, we've got our teams that help you uh, with the whole process we've got an online tool which uh, gives you an, an understanding of how easy that migration is so all that makes makes the whole journey quite quite uh, simple jay if you'd like to add more Yeah, Jaya, do you have anything to comment? Okay, if not, um, there is a question from the floor. It says, can I know after migration, after you have migrated to EDB, how much time it took uh, for the Sri Lanka bank report? Okay. Uh, okay, so this question is to me, uh, Violet, right. So for the Sri Lanka bank, we haven't deployed this EDP Postgres on the production environment. What we did, because you know, it's with the bank, it's a tedious journey. Tedious journey meaning the CIO has to be convinced, the board has to give approval. There are a lot much of the processes involved. And once they already have this, uh, they have signed up unlimited user license with the Oracle. So you have to convince. So those two, there's, a, there's a process which is involved. So as of now, we haven't gone live with the Postgre in Sri Lankan bank. But just to answer your question, what we did in-house, internally at my office place, we also did the same study, same study with a similar number of GL heads. You remember, during the presentation I talked about, we did the tweaking in the application, we reduced our GL heads, we club certain GL heads so that the system earlier was taking 177 hours and we brought it back to 68 hours to be precise, 68 hours. So that's how the tweaking was done. But that was on the Oracle Exadata. Now for the Postgres, we did a back in our office. So report were promising and uh, with, with 177, 
was brought it down to i think 90 hours yeah 90 hours if i if i'm not wrong i will have to see those reports because i'm forgetting some figures but it was around 90 hours yeah violet okay yeah uh, thank you thank you majid uh, okay this is a fairly long question i hope i okay let me try to read it is do you have eula license agreement how is eula i do not know what it means construct from license support cost perspective does it make well, sense Ashish, Ashish has to answer this but take this question right so um, this is regarding an oracle eula question uh okay uh, well, can you just repeat the full question? I didn't understand what it was. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, the first part of the question is, do you have EULA license agreement? That mm -hmm. is part one. Part two is, how is EULA construct from license support cost perspective? Okay. Uh, so yes, we, we we do not have a EULA per se, but yes, we've got, we've got a license agreement for for big customers who are looking to deploy it across across their overall uh, organization so yes uh, we'll be more than happy to connect with uh, with the specific person who's asked this question uh, to answer that having uh, having said that uh, if you're looking uh, on our website if you go and uh, we'll be more than happy to share it if you're migrating from other rdbms to edb the typical cost saving that we're looking at is around 50 to 60 percent Okay, and again, there are a lot of variables that that come into play. Uh, we'll have to look at what your current deployment structure is. What uh, what all? Uh, again, please remember when you when you go for Oracle licensing, you have to it's, uh, you have to purchase for every specific component that's charged separately. Enterprise DB doesn't charge that way, so uh, we, it's not a clear apples to apples comparison. But uh, in different parameters if you look at you're looking at a 60 percent cost saving at, at a bare minimum thank you um, yeah thank you ashish uh we do have a couple more questions i think this is uh, the next one is uh, for amajit the person asked do you have ac active cluster like oracle rec rac do you have active cluster like Oracle RAC? Okay, so Ashish or Jay? Uh, yeah, I mean, anyone can answer this question, but I, I guess this is Sorry. from an Oracle user asking, do you have active uh, cluster like Oracle RAC? Okay, so we, uh, Jay, okay, I, I'll take it. This is Ashish once again. Uh, so yes, we've got we've got uh, tools which are able to deliver the same kind of uh, performance or functionality as you would from an Oracle Rack perspective. Uh, again, we would need to discuss with you very specifically why why have you implemented Rack, uh, and we've got similar uh, tools that will be able to give you the similar kind of performance and functionality. Okay, thank you, um, thank you, Ashish. Okay, uh, one more question on how you have handled the temporary temporary tables in EDB from Oracle. Okay, this is for me. This okay. is, I think, I think this, this this is directed to me because temp table issue, which we face in our Sri Lankan bank. So I think it is related to that. So okay, so in in Oracle when we were implementing our FTP. So what we had, we had something called as a concept of materialized view. So this, the person who has raised this question, he is, I think he is listening to me. So we had something called as a materialized view. So that materialized view was actually, we were doing a lot of sorting of the data because we wanted a report in certain format. So what we did uh, during our uh, comparison, Oracle versus Postgre, EDB Postgre in our office environment. At that time, we had also migrated this materialized view and we changed the concept. The display on the UI for the report was changed from the earlier version 
so maybe because of which we never face this temp table issue again in the EDB database. So EDB, this temp table issue was completely taken off because we migrated our materialized view. So we said goodbye to our materialized view and we changed the, the way of handling the things and generating the report. So that's how we were able to manage. Hey, um, thank you, Majid. Uh, <clears throat> one more question is open to anyone. It says, um, is it possible to switch over to Postgres when the CBS is also Oracle's product? Isn't there a tight coupling? All right, right. So this is for me, I think, because we okay. in uh, care, care risk solutions, since we are into the credit risk domain, we come we interface with the bank's other application so when i say other application it is core banking loan origination trade finance treasury system all those systems which is available in the bank we communicate and we interface those applications so let's assume in the bank and the ecosystem there are 16 different applications in one of the bank care risk solution has interface with 10 different applications it doesn't matter at all. I tell you the reason. If, let's say, you are interacting with core banking system, I'll take the same example which you have given, the core banking system. Let's say the core banking system is running on Oracle or DB2400. Let's say it is running on DB2400. How does it matter? So when you handshake from your application, you either connect over the online interface or you connect over the offline interface. If you connect over the online interface, you are handshaking over the web services. That's a one, one, one way of interfacing. Other, you might be interacting with the uh, ESB bus, enterprise serial bus. In both the cases, it is online, and you don't care about you don't care about what is which kind of a database the source system is using. It is completely immune. Now coming to the offline interfacing mechanism. It could be with using the flat file, delimiter-based, comma-separated, Excel sheet, XML file, JSON file, all those. In that case, also, the database is completely isolated and you don't care about. Only you care about when it is a DB. And usually, if you look at the standard practice, as the thumb rule is you should not go for DP link the kind of interfacing mechanism and data exchange because that's a too risky and uh, it may bring down your servers also so that is why as a practice in care risk solution we don't usually go for db link a kind of handshaking environment we usually prefer the other modes of interfacing and handshaking and that is why if the core banking system even the core banking system is oracle db 400 and my application is on edb 400 i am very much happy to interface the application so there are various ways and and my suggestion is whenever you are designing whenever you are thinking think from the two perspective first perspective is not just the implementing it in the time but maintenance wise because in the long term your application becomes your responsibility to maintain till the lifespan of the application so you should not end up and in end up implementing something which becomes a burden to the organization so think from that perspective think from that rational and design accordingly so my advice is it doesn't matter which database core banking is using you should handshake properly using the offline mode of interfacing file system or something other don't go for dp link and you don't care about whether it's oracle or adb postgres and you will be happy with the EDB Postgre because the kind of performance, security, performance, security, and other aspects of its support, all those those benefits will be given to you. Yeah, why uh, Yeah, thank you, Majid. I think we have time for maybe one or two more questions. Um, okay, this one probably is directed at uh, Ashish or maybe even Chemtrol. Okay, it, it says, do you have RDS service in AWS, Azure, or GCP, etc.? Can we bring can we bring your own license onto cloud? Cloud. 
Uh, yeah. so I, I'll do, take do you have RDS service in AWS Azure or uh, GCP, etc.? Can we bring our own license onto Crowd? So yes, we, uh, EDB is available on all these platforms that you just spoke about, and you can bring your own, own licenses. We do provide CDS, which is our version of RDS, Cloud Database Services, on AWS at this point in time. Thank you, thank you, Ashish. Just, uh, I guess we ha only have time for one more question. Do you have OLAP capability? Do you have, uh, yeah, I think it's OLAP capability, OLAP. Yeah, I think so. I'll we'll, yeah, so need a little bit more details, but yes, we have OLAP capability. That's the simple question. Okay, I think we are at the top of the hour and I really thank everyone for um, the very interesting questions as well as I really thank the speakers, especially Amajit Tiwari, uh, who has uh, shared such, such an interesting stories. For those whose questions um, we were not able to answer today, we will uh, reply you uh, via email for whatever questions you have raised. And uh, before we close, I want to um, let everyone know that uh, this, this webinar is being recorded and we will share the recording as well as the slide deck with you uh, via email. So once again, I just want to thank everyone for taking time to attend and I wish you a really great day ahead. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye.